Hey guys, welcome back. Day two. Got the barn cleaned out right here. But you can see my boy Sam showed up here. Out from Lubbock, Texas. He's here. And uh, we're going to bring you along on this project. Sam's going to join us. Like I talked to you about Sam. Sam is a former student of mine. Played football for me in middle school. I uh, actually had him in class too. Taught him Texas history. So now he's a welder. So, which is great. Um, glad he's here and glad he made it. So we got the welder hooked up. Done our measurements. We're cutting seed purlin. We're doing running eight inch seed purlin along the bottom here. This is going to be an office. Just to remind you, we still got to tear this out. I told you I was going to. I hadn't done it yet. Wanted to get get going, and then we're going to tear out this trough. We're going to reuse it in this space. But Sam's here. He's cranking. And uh, we're getting ready to start welding, so hope you guys are ready for a, um, a good day to get things accomplished here. Our goal today is we're going to frame this up. Yes, we are going to concrete it. Eventually, you're going to pour a pad here, but we're going to go ahead and form everything. We're going to uh, put the seat purlin up, put our beams up, rafters. This is our goal today is to have this office completed, and then we're going to move that trough out, get it out of here pull some of this uh, two and three eighths pipe up that you see right here that holds the trough. We're gonna save that trough, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, try to get this office frame built today. That's our goal and we'll see where we are. So stay tuned guys, here we go.
All right, so I've got the plywood off the walls. It's kind of hard to see some of those screws. They were uh, blended in with dirt, poop, dust, but I got a bunch of them out. And I actually left some of them in here, but they were, were kind of difficult to get out just because of all the crap over time that accumulates on them from feeding in here. But here's what we've got, I'm trying to keep and salvage as much as we can. Yes, I'm keeping all the screws and making sure none ends up in here, I promise. But I'm kind of anxious to lift this up and see if we can just lift this whole trough up with the skid steer and uh, see if it's just sitting on this frame. See, there's a two and three eighths runners all the way across here under this trough, which I think they built it uh, right. They've got them bolted together here. Looks like, uh, looks like a two by six bolted together. So I wonder if we can just pick the whole thing up and move it instead of doing it by sections. Then we'll have to pull this out. So we've got some figuring out to do with the skid steer. You want me to go hit that side with a hammer and release it or push on it? What? Do you want me to go release that? I think that top rail is going to hit. Yeah, we're going to have to... We're going to have to knock that top rail off. Yeah. I'm going to lower this so I can get out. Okay.
You got about a foot. Yep, keep going down. sure if these were concreted in but they're obviously concreted in but Sam and I got a pretty good system he's chaining it up pulling these out we've got three or four pulled out and we got two left but Beast, beast mode. One more. All right, so what took up most of our morning is was we removed the feed troughs that were here. So we removed them. It was quite a task. They were pretty jammed in there, but luckily these frames right here, well, I'll say luckily, they're actually concreted in. We didn't know if they were gonna be concreted in but the uh, skid steer, it's so nice to have it. We've already done so much this morning with it, but we ripped, that, uh, ripped the feed bins out with the skid steer. Once we did that, had to take off all the boarding first. Then we lifted up, as you can see, we lifted up the feed trough, got it out. Once we got the feed troughs out, then we went back and we pulled uh, the pipe out. It's two and three eighths pipe and uh, Sam had the idea of pulling out with the chain which is a great idea so now he's getting ready to uh, we're gonna put a beam across here and I say beam we're using uh, four by four square tubing for our beams basically to run across here and then we'll put another one here so we'll run two beams and then uh, we don't have a lot to do here it, it won't take long putting up the C purlin we already got two C purlin here and um, it didn't take very long at all. But Sam's getting ready to weld it up. He's welding something right now. So, and then we also hauled dirt out of here because we're gonna concrete this eventually. Uh, we're gonna pour concrete after we put all the sea purlin and this stuff up. And uh, so we had to dig out and clean out a bunch of the hay and whatnot that was in here, get it cleaned out and um, ready because once the sea purlin is up, once the walls are up we won't be able to clean that dirt out. Um, so we went ahead and did that real quick before we start putting up the rest of the walls. So stay tuned guys. Grinding away, Sam's hard working. 
We only had a couple of minor accidents with the uh, pitchfork on the uh, skid steer. The bucket's on it right now, but uh, when we lifted up to get the troughs out, I uh, got in there just a little bit here and a little bit there, but that's, uh, we can patch that up, that's okay. Other than that, not a lot of damage, just very messy. You can see where the old feed trough existed, so, but the cool part is we are, we are gonna reuse this feed trough. So we salvaged it, we damaged just a little bit, not too bad, it's still, it's all together. We got it out in one piece, probably 20 foot long, but we're gonna actually use it inside the barn. Go get him, Maya. Let's get him. Go get him. Get him. Go get him. Ah, wrong way, Maya. Wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Give him a second. He'll ease over there. He won't bug you, so... He's just being nosy. Maya, easy. Ah, turd. Go get him, outside. There he is.
Don't screw it up, Sam. morning guys we are back day three um day two with sam really well day three. First day we had to go get metal and whatnot but getting the rafters put on uh yesterday we ran out of daylight so we didn't get to put the rafters on sam started putting these uh plates on these metal plates um clips i think is what do you call these right here the clips purling clips we put on, sam put on purling clips finished that this morning first thing and uh, then we just put the rafters on and he's welding those up and this building this 20 by 20 office will be pretty much finished after he finishes welding the rafters up and uh, then later on this will have a concrete port in it uh, when that day comes that'll be later on not in a huge rush to to do that and then we'll get sheet metal we have to match the sheet metal because it's u panel it's kind of an old classic barn paneling so we've got to match it that's kind of special order that but uh we're gonna finish that and then we're gonna actually go inside the barn um and we are going to build some stuff in there a tool sh a tool shed that will be fun we're gonna start all that construction so anyways lots of work um lots of fun things lots of projects and fence building is getting started um out here they're driving two and seven eighths fence post in the ground and uh, they're doing that today. Richard, the guy who helps us build fence around here, and uh, his son Trevor are driving it with his skid steer. He's got a power driver on the top of that. I'll show you here in a little bit. And they're gonna, they'll start putting a top rail on it, and then we'll put, come back. Kevin and I will put our continuous fence panels with, on that pipe that they're building. So lots of things happening around the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch at the new property. So uh, we're getting this thing going. Sam's doing a great job. It's crazy how big his head is. Yeah, he's a big boy. You guys get out of here. Get, 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 get. Who are looking at this?
All right, so what we're doing now is we've made some changes and whatnot on kind of what we're going to do, but uh, we're actually going to take this third. I, I say this barn's in thirds. It's a 60 by 80, 60 deep, 80 long here. But we took this third. It's a 20 by 20, kind of the opposite of our office that uh, Sam and I finished. But we're going to take this and make it a shop. And so it's got the box in it. Got an electric box, but um, we're not gonna put a ceiling in this. It's just gonna go all the way up because it's a shop. And we can park skid steer in here. You can park uh, Polaris in here, and uh, we'll have a door to it and two doors to it actually, and uh, lock it up and keep all of our stuff in here. guys welcome back day four with sam sam and i are uh last day of working together he's got to go back and uh, start a new job and whatnot but we are kind of wrapping everything up in this corner right here uh, which is basically we're enclosing a shop is what we're doing uh we can put you know the atv in there uh skid steer and uh, any of that stuff and, and lock it up that's what we're doing today We've got our overhead entry that we're gonna work on a little bit, but other than that, um, today's the last day. We'll keep you updated here in just a little bit. I'll show you everything that uh, he and I have finished. Uh, Sam has done all the welding on this, and uh, he's uh, he's attention to detail guy, and I love it. So, sure, I'm gonna miss all of his help. Man, he's he's covered a lot of ground in four days, and um, we're about to wrap this up here. So. Stay tuned guys and uh, we'll show you all the uh, results. killing it he, uh, it, it he's used to working uh, with some places that have concrete especially when you're hanging a door but in this situation we had to kind of do some thinking because of the we're not going to pour concrete uh, in this uh, tool area whatever you want to call it um, tool room shed room whatever you want to call it but we did some engineering what we call ranch welding is what sam calls it i like it that's, that's basically how we do things sometimes. We're not professionals at this, but uh, we do our best to make it work and make it look good. But he's, uh, he's done some manufacturing here, some engineering, and uh, we're about to hang a door here. And we already tried to put it up there to see if it fit, and it uh, was like a glove. It fit perfect. So props to this guy. He knows what he's doing. He's young, and uh, he's learning, too, at the same time been welding for three years he's also going to school for welding and uh, this is all a great experience for him so if, uh, if you're in the Texas area West Texas or North Dallas uh, you need a good welder Sam is uh, a young inspiring hard working guy that can, uh, loves to work and loves to do a good job his attention to detail is awesome they don't make them like this very often guys and I'm not saying that because I, I know Sam uh, way back when he was in middle school and whatnot, but they just don't make them like this much anymore. So you appreciate uh, young guys like this. So looking for a welder, Sam Shaw.
They're always so heat. That's our bull that got out the other day. <laughs> He's so goofy. All right, what do we build, Sam? We built a tool room inside of your barn. Northeast corner of the barn. Needs tin and trim. Tin and some and trim. It will be official, but framing's done. And why did we? What are the spaces? Explain the spaces. Well, here, how the depth we got. Usually, uh, are you talking about spaces between the purlins? Yep. Well, usually. You want to make them even. You want to go four foot, four foot, four foot, all the way up. Starting from the bottom, usually. But uh, in this instance, we uh, we have a pre-existing purlin on the pre-existing structure at five foot. You can see right about there. Yep. So we uh, we ran these purlin on the new structure level off of the old structure to make everything look uniform and. Uh, uh, we could have put it at four foot, but it would have made things a little more complicated. And we would have had to put uh, something to weld off of that wasn't there. So this was our best bet, and it's gonna work. Uh, it's gonna work just fine. And uh, doors fastened in, and perfectly. Like it was perfect. Yeah, we uh, we looked out. We got it first try. Considering we're not on a slab either, we're working off of dirt. That's the thing. That's the thing. Is there was not a slab here. So we used four by four posts. Um, we s actually s straighten them up, set them, and then we put them in concrete. We set this one first, um, measured the door, got it precise, and then we concreted that one as well. So did a great job. Yep, and it matches the rest of the barn, just like Sam is saying. This will eventually have concrete in it because we're gonna do some other stuff with this. We're not gonna put concrete in here, but we are gonna pour some um, find, uh, you know, gravel or whatnot, some rock, and uh, we will, it'll be level with this. This is basically our grand level here. So if we were putting concrete in here, this would be basically where you'd be standing. It'd be flush. Yep, there you go. Something else about this metal is it seems this purlin you can go up and well you can't push that really but from the from the middle you can you can it's a little wobbly but what happens when you put the tin on it the tin fastens everything together makes it to where uh makes it to where things can't shift it holds everything square it tightens it down and, uh, i noticed you that you wouldn't think so it's like all this all this is relatively thin aside from the corners the official corners of the structure that are beam but uh, the purlin in between, uh, there's a little bit of science behind the design of how they design all this material that uh, in the end, uh, you wouldn't think so getting through it, but once everything is done, then you're like, wow, this, this really is uh, structurally sound, yes. I guess you could say. But It'll all come together once metal's on it. Yep. And we're going to go all the way up on our metal. We didn't put a, we didn't cap it off and put a roof in here. There's no need for that. It's just more material. You could do that if you were going to make a loft and put storage in it, but we didn't do that. We're just going to go all the way up um, with our sheet metal and it'll really tighten this thing up and make it solid. That worked out, didn't it? Sweet. No critters. All right, so last day, Sam's got to head back to West Texas, and um, what a week. We were, uh, Sam got here uh, Monday, about 1 30 1 40 and uh we hit the ground runner we measured everything we went and got metal for the week and i'd say we got a lot done and uh we built a an office we got a, a place ready for an office 
um, a 20 by 20 office. We, we were going to possibly build a kitchen with some bathrooms, but we're going to need the foundation first for that. And um, so we, we skipped that part uh, for time-wise, and we built a shop area we enclosed that, which you just saw that. And so uh, another 20 by 20, I guess, room yeah. for that. Yeah, roughly so, 20 by 20. And um, <clears throat> now I guess the next thing on those two parts is we just need sheet metal and we got to order that and we got to order trim and and all that so that'll be fun but sam's got to head back and just to reiterate again sam i had him in class when i taught texas history at plano in plano and um and then i was able to coach him in football so sam uh was the kid that uh and, and i'm not bragging on because he's here but sam was a kid that <laughs> You know, as coaches, there's not very many of them like this on, on each team. But Sam was the kid that you could tell him to do something, and you, you drew it up for him. He was the kid that would go do it. And we never had to worry about Sam, really. And uh, and he was just the kid we could count on. And it's funny, yeah, we, we've kept up, and there's other kids in his class that we've kept up with, uh, or kept up together over time, because that was what... 2000 the first time you taught me it was like almost like about nine years ago yeah about nine kind of years ago yeah and so time has come around it's come back around basically and um yeah so here we are 2022 and uh sam's out here helping me put yeah. this building together and try to create some rooms and who would have thought yeah i know right so that's uh you know when you go into teaching and coaching uh, something that i didn't realize is the relationships and the bonds that you create by teaching not only with other teachers but the students and then the athletes um, and the players that you create and um, I've kept up with them for a long time but just the fact it just dawned on me I was like I need to do all this work there's somebody I didn't think of and it was Sam and so luckily it worked out where he was able to come up here and in between jobs and help yep. and so just thank you buddy for all your help and i appreciate it and it was a good week yeah it was a good week we worked hard and we were able to have some bison steaks last night for our last night but had a lot of fun too yeah had a lot of fun and he was able to hang out with the with some bison um crew. you know with the crew so um anyways it's 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 awesome that uh he's a young inspiring guy and he's uh about to start a new job and he wants to run his own business someday so um, if you're around the Lubbock area um, or, or maybe in North Texas sometime, uh, you're looking for a guy that's done this type of work. We put, a, we put uprights on the, uh, um, for an entry, a main entry. We, I mean, did all kinds of stuff. Built two structures of, uh, for rooms inside of a older, an already existing barn, which is so much more difficult because it's already existing. It's not brand new. And you're starting from ground up, so we had to do a lot of thinking. And uh, oh yeah, a lot, I'm, a lot of thinking. <laughs> I'm not the guy to be doing all that. Luckily, Sam's had some what three years of experience doing this sort of stuff. Three official years that we yeah. that uh, kind of came in handy a little bit. There's still a lot of a lot of new stuff uh, going off of. Which heck, if you're if you're building off an existing structure everyone's going to be different so you're kind of learning something new every time i'm glad i got to show you so that yeah. if i'm not handy or i'm not around you know you could uh I'm basically up. basically just get yourself a hand yeah and uh someone who knows how to use a tape measure and you'll be good it will be good yeah. but what do we call it uh ranch welding we're ranch welding ranch welding it's uh we're not professionals that he's a lot more professional at this than i am but um there's times where uh, you just got to get stuff done and uh, we call it ranch welding and so I learned that yeah. from Sam so um, we did some ranch welding and <laughs> maybe I can get him back up here to, to finish a lot of this stuff and maybe put some um, new uh, rooms in this barn so anyways just want to thank Sam and I hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned I'll tell you more about Sam and keep you updated with everything thank you guys for watching us